please be seated. Thanks, buddy. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the Township of Abington's Board of Commissioners meeting for Thursday, September the 8th, 2016. And may we have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Uh, let me announce that uh, first, Commissioner Carol Gillespie is excused for the evening, and also that Commissioner Drew Rothman is running late due to transportation problems, and Commissioner Tom Farron will be arriving late also due to some personal issues. <coughs> Having said that, would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you. At this time, I'd like to turn the program over to Police Chief Bill Kelly for some presentations and for some swearing in of so, two officers. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Tonight, we are in, we're going to be swearing in three new recruit officers to the Abington Township Police Department. So. Um, let me first call them off one by one and ask them to come up and stand by the podium. The first is Joseph Marrero. In November 2008, Joseph was hired by the Philadelphia Police Department, graduated from the Police Academy in 2009, was assigned the 17th District South Division where he earned numerous awards and commendations for his work and service, recruit officer Joseph Marrero. Next is Robert Steck. Um, Robert completed an internship with the Avenue Police Department in 2013. He received a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Gwynedd Mercy University in May of 2014. In June of 2014, he completed the Montgomery County Municipal Police Academy and was em employed as a police officer with the Philadelphia Housing Authority prior to, be, prior to being hired by Abington PD. Charles Nicholas, Jr. He received a Bachelor of Arts degree from Alvernia University in May of 2011. In December 14th, Charles graduated from the Baltimore County Police Academy and was employed as a Deputy Sheriff with the Cecil County Sheriff's Office in Maryland prior to being hired by the Abington um, Police Department. And that is re recruit Charles Nicholas, Jr. And Judge, if I could ask you to come forward to administer the oath, please. Gentlemen, uh, if you could place your hand on the Bible and raise your other hand that's not on the Bible and repeat after me. After I say I, state your name. I do solemnly swear that I will support, obey, and defend the Constitution and the laws of the United States the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And, the Township of Abington. and the Township of Abington, and that I will faithfully discharge with fidelity, faithfully discharge with fidelity. The, duties of my office the duties of my office as a police officer for Abington Township. And I will obey the rules and regulations Policies and, procedures policies and procedures governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Governing all sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Congratulations,
First of all, I want to thank Judge Kessler for coming out and swearing in our new recruits. We appreciate you coming out uh, for us, Judge. Thank you. And uh, now I'd like to let the um, recruits a chance to briefly inter uh, introduce their family. Um, Joseph, why don't you go first? How you doing, everybody? I have my uh, fiance, Christina Berrios, here. My fiance, Kelsey Scollin, my dad, my mom, and my fiance's mother. How's everybody doing? Uh, my mother, Tina, sisters, Aaron and Caitlin, and uh, Charles Sr. Welcome to your new family, gentlemen. You can be seated now. Thanks. Mr. President, members of the board, at this time we're we also um, as, much, as happy as we are to be swearing in the new officers to fill uh, the many vacancies that we got in this last year. We um, are it's a bittersweet moment as we um, say goodbye to um, one of the longtime members of our police department, board member of our police department, Lieutenant Steve Hockwind, and I'd like to call him up to um, stand in front of everybody uh, up here. Everybody knows Steve, but ladies, Steve Hockwind. In March of 1983, Steve was sworn in as an officer with the Abington Township Police Department. He graduated from Westchester in May of that year with a BS in criminal justice, and in June he officially launched his career patrolling the streets of Abington. Fourteen years later, he was promoted to the rank of sergeant, and in 2005 he advanced to the rank of lieutenant after having been acting patrol lieutenant for B Platoon. In 2008, Steve was assigned to head the administrative division, become a division commander. As the division's commander, he stepped into a major department project to make significant percentage of our operations paperless as we tried to enter the 20th century. Yes, Steve? He served as the liaison officer for the Abington six-member park ranger unit that patrols the township park system and was in charge of the special police unit that handles traffic details and special events and saves us a tremendous amount of money by their volunteer service um, to the township. He served as both a field training officer and a DARE officer, a DARE officer in Roslyn Elementary School and Meadowbrook School. Uh, very interesting, Steve was elected several times to serve in an officer capacity with the Abington Township Police Association by fellow members of the Police Association. And for 23 years, he was a highly respected member of our tactical team, serving at that time as its assistant commander. In March 2011, Steve graduated from the FBI National Academy Leadership Development Program for Law Enforcement Executives. He returned with a yellow brick for accomplishing the 6.2 mile run and a blue brick, which represented the achievement of having swum a total of 34 miles over the course of the program. That's why you're so slim now, Steve. <laughs> the past few years have been teaching a security operations management course for Penn State Abington. Some of his fondest memories were teaching uh, involved their students as young adult in college and beyond. They came up to him and thanked him and some have recounted how his teaching made a difference and it kind of shows both sides of Steve. He had the, the tough side of being in the tag team but the soft side of um, wanting to help kids and uh, help them develop and do good things for him in that regard. Steve is now the coordinator of safety and student attendance for Abington School District, handling residency, attendance, and truancy. He's a natural for this job as he continues to serve the public. He believes we'll have many opportunities to help young people obtain support services needed for their home and their school problems that often cause their truancy. Um, to tell you the truth, Steve had a number of other offers and opportunities. Uh, and I think the thing that was the clincher was when Steve had the opportunity to stay in the community that he loves. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to um, introduce to you once again, Lieutenant Steve Hockley.
I'd like to call down Lori Schreiber, the uh, Chairman of the Public Safety Committee, to um, offer a commendation to Lieutenant Hockman. I actually thought this was a mistake when I saw this. I was like, no, he can't possibly be leaving. You, since I became a commissioner, are probably maybe the first or one of the first police officers that I met here. And uh, I've seen you at a million events. I can't even imagine you not being involved anymore. So, Lieutenant Steve Hockwin, to acknowledge with sincere appreciation your 33 years of dedicated service to the citizens of Abington Township, March 28, 1983 through September 5, 2016. Congratulations. Thank you, Chief. Um, as I'm sitting here watching the uh, new officers get sworn in, and it's like a blink of an eye, 33 and a half years is uh, just absolutely amazing. Days go slow, however the years go extremely fast. So I want to welcome the, the new officers here, in with, in with the young, out with the old. <laughs> so, not really that old, but we are members of AARP, right, hon? No. <laughs> Get that uh, popcorn for eight dollars at the movies. There you go. But uh, no, it was it was a, an awesome ride journey. Um, this job is very noble, and you're you're going to find that out, uh, gentlemen. Um, just a great career. I call it a front row seat to the greatest show on earth because it really is. Every day things are changing. You're involved in different things. Yes, some of them are bad, but a lot of them are happy as well. So I must say, um, I just had an awesome time. Uh, coming here in 1983, it was a little rough, 84, until uh, Chief Kelly got here. And uh, it's been a great ride ever since. So thank everybody, commissioners, uh, working with the accounting department, Kevin, a little trying at times. <laughs> wow. Okay. I have a, a little doll of Kevin, and I threw darts at No, no. <laughs> no, it worked out well, and I enjoyed that. Um, great working relationship, and especially with all the officers. And uh, the last platoon I was on, a platoon, was great. I think Sean Williams is here somewhere. In the back, Shane LaRosa, thank you to the sergeants that I work with. Just a great um, final year and a half that I was here. Just perfect and uh, smooth running, and it was uh, really great. So um, I want to thank my wife uh, for putting up with night work, holidays, weekends, mm -hmm. and all that. So I, I appreciate you hanging in there. Thank you. And uh, just a great career. Um, I'm very happy to be down the street two blocks working for the school district. And I, I, feel, I feel at ease. It was a very easy transition for me, I have to say, uh, working for the district because I still keep in touch with all the officers. I will be needing their assistance as well. And uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If the uh, families would like to leave now and step out, you're welcome to do that. But please move out the door quickly and quietly so the board can move on with its meeting. Who's ever there by the doors, please open the doors up and um, get them out the door, please. As they're following out, I just want to wish good luck and best wishes to the new police officers signed in today. And also best wishes to a friend. Lieutenant Steve Hockwin for his well-earned retirement. At this time, we'll go back to our formal agenda, and I'll ask for <coughs> approval of the minutes and call on Vice President Stephen Klein. Thank you, President Luker. I'd like to make a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the Board of Commissioners meeting from August 11th, 2016. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? All those in favor? Aye. 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 
Opposed? The motion passes. Now, at this time, uh, before we move to the next agenda item, I'd just like to preface it by saying tonight we will be following the rules and procedures to be followed starting tonight at all meetings of the Board of Commissioners as adopted unanimously by the Board of Commissioners on the 14th day of July 2016. These comments are restricted to only items to be voted on tonight. Please remember that there is a three-minute speaking limit. So at this time, I'll call on comments from the public on all or any agenda items on the agenda this evening. I see a gentleman by the name of Alfred Scheib signed up. It's not part of the agenda. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Then you'll get an opportunity at the end of the meeting. Okay. Are there any other public comments at this time? Okay, if there are none, we'll move right into our first committee of public works, and I call on Commissioner Director Tom Hecker. Thank you, President Luker. Now, the Public Works Committee has seven items, five of which will be voted on this evening. PW1 was deleted from the agenda because it was an informational session at uh, last week's committee meeting. Uh, all residents who are interested to learn more about PFCs and the safety of the drinking water in Abington are encouraged to visit the township's website where the video of that informational session at which representatives from Aqua Pennsylvania were present. PW2. This is a motion to approve and enter into contract with Tamco Construction Incorporated for the demolition of 1004 Urban Road in the amount of $33,600 to be funded by the 2014 bond issue and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. PW3, and this is a motion to approve final payment for the Tennis Avenue, North Hills Avenue, Fairview Avenue storm sewer project to N. Abenizio Contractors Incorporated in the amount of $11,802.65 to be funded from the 2015 HUD program, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. PW4, this is a motion to approve final payment for the Rockwell Road sidewalk project to Biazzi Landscaping LLC in the amount of $2,300 to be funded from fund balance, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. PW5, this is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2124, adding 1908 Paper Mill Road to the Old Walsh Road Sanitary Sewer District, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. PW6. This is a motion to adopt resolution number 16-029 to authorize the Township of Abington to submit an application formally requesting a grant of funds from the PA Small Water and Sewer Program for 2016, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And seeing that PW7 has been deleted from the agenda, that concludes the Public Works Committee's business for this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Hecker. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ben Sanchez, Director of Code Enforcement and Land Development. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we have CE1. This is a motion to approve the subdivision application of Patrick Deacon, applicant of the property located at 2661 Mount Carmel Avenue, Abington Township. The applicant seeks approval to subdivide the property into two parcels. Lot number one will contain the existing dwelling and is listed at 13,313 square feet. Proposed lot number two is plotted at 7,500 square feet, and the existing barn is marked to be removed. The properties are zoned in the R4 residential district in Ward number six of the Township of Abington, and the, most, the motion is subject to conditions and waivers as listed in the agenda, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. 
Next, we have CE2. This is a motion to approve the subdivision and land development application of Patrick Deacon, applicant for the property located at 2718 Moreland Road. The applicant proposes to subdivide the 0.64 acre site into two lots. Lot number one will consist of 14,658 square feet and contain the existing single family dwelling and detached garage. Lot number two is proposed at 13,525 square feet and is proposed for development of a single family dwelling. Both lots comply with the dimensional requirements of section 304.3 of the zoning ordinance. The property is zoned in the R4 residential district in ward number five of the, Abing of the township of Abington and the motion subject to conditions and waivers as listed in the agenda and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Next, we have CE3. This is a motion to approve the subdivision application of she Shelley and Nicholas Schorsch, owners of the property located at 1580 Warner Road. The applicant proposes to subdivide an existing parcel of 7.86 acres in size into two parcels. Lot number one has the required lot frontage on Mill Road and is proposed to be reduced to 4.22 acres in total lot area. Lot number two is plotted at 3.64 acres in total lot area and has the required lot frontage on the private portion of Warner Road. The property is zoned in the R1 residential district in ward number one of the Township of Abington and the motion subject to conditions and waivers as listed in the agenda and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Finally, Mr. President, we have CE4. This is a motion to approve the subdivision application of Brown Associates LLC for the property known as 302 Home Avenue and the vacant property known as parcel number 3000079001. Fronting on Chancellor Avenue. The applicant proposes to relocate the existing shared property line and transfer 200 square feet of ground from 302 Home Avenue to the vacant parcel. The lot area of 302 Home Avenue will be reduced to 15,755.2 square feet and the vacant parcel will be increased to 7,634.2 square feet. Both lots will conform to the dimensional requirements of Section 304.3 of the Zoning Ordinance of the Township of Abington. The vacant parcel of the property is zoned for the development of a single-family dwelling. The properties are zoned in the R4 Residential District in Ward No. 4 of the Township of Abington and the motion subject to conditions and waivers as listed in the agenda, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and second. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. President, that concludes the business of the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. Next, Director Lori Schreiber will take care of Public Safety Committee. Thank you, President Luker. We have three agenda items this evening. PS1 is a motion to adopt Ordinance Number 2125, Amending Chapter 156, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 14, Stop Intersections, and Article 3, Parking Regulations, Section 25, Parking Prohibited at All Times, No Parking Between Signs, No Parking Here to Corner, Parking Prohibited Except Certain Hours, No Stopping or Standing, and Section 28, Special Purpose Parking Zones, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. PS2 is a motion to advertise ordinance number 2126, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article 2, traffic regulations, section 14, stop intersections, and article 3, parking regulations, section 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, Parking prohibited except certain hours, no stopping or standing, and Section 28, Special Purpose Parking Zones, for adoption at the regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Commissioners on October 13th, 2016, at 7.30 p.m., and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? 
Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. PS3 is a motion to authorize township officials to accept a grant award from the Bureau of Highway Safety and Traffic Engineering in the amount of $55,000 with the township's matching portion approximately $480, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes our agenda this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Schreiber. At this time, Commissioner John Spiegelman, Director of Public Affairs. Thank you, President Luker. The Public Affairs Committee has no business at this time. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I, can, I can talk if you want. But <laughs> probably probably like not. It. No, thank you. <laughs> at this time, I'd like to call on Vice President Stephen Klein, Director of the Finance Committee. Thank you, President Luker. And for the Treasury Report, I'd like to call on Treasurer Jay Blumenthal. You skipped the pension committee? No, the pension blast. Okay. Thank you. Are, you. are you ready to go? I'm ready. Thank you, Commissioner <laughs> Klein. The monies received by the various departments and deposited in the Republic Bank for the month of August were a total of 3740862 compared to last year of 3788621 It was a decrease of 47759 for the month. But if you look at the year to date, we had a total of 51461359 compared to 58954684, so we're ahead about 2 million five. It's a good thing. <laughs> All right, Got it. it. You ready? <laughs> I'm not ready. <laughs> There's another piece of paper. <laughs> Deposits of real estate taxes for the month of August transferred to the finance department, 41004 year-to-date, 25731885 with a balance collective of 1031297 And remember, at the end of the year, we're usually at 98% with only 2%, so I don't see any problem hitting that mark. August of 15 was 34490 We have an increase of 6514 That is my report. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. FC1, motion to approve investments for the month of July as previously circulated to the board. It was noted that investments for the month totaled $1,030,000. Interest rates yield, interest rate yields range from 0.8% to 0.95%, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. FC2, motion to A, approve the July expenditures as previously circulated to the board in the amount of $4,388,870.08 in salaries and wages in the amount of $1,837,934.50. And B, authorize the proper officials to sign vouchers in payments of bills and contracts as they mature through the month of October 2016. And I so move. Second. So move to second it. May we have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Rothman? Yes. Myers? Yes. Martin? Yes. Trevor? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Pacito? Yes. Barron? Gillespie? Pecker? Yes. Kalowski? Yes. Klein? Yes. 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 FC 3, motion to approve the advance and travel expense activity for July 2016. As previously circulated to the board, advance and travel expense reports were $0 and $5,155.10 respectively. Seven-month expense total, $28,863.19, and I so move. Second. It's been moved to second it. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. <coughs> FC4, motion to approve the clearing fund, the deferred revenue, expense activity, and petty cash balances for the month of July, as previously circulated to the board. Clearing fund receipts and disbursements for the month of July 2016 were $934.98 and $3,250.14, respectively. Deferred revenue expense receipts and disbursements for the month of July 2016 were $12,669.50 and $9,318, respectively, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. I'm going to call. I'm getting a, I'm getting a uh, 
the sting I, the sting note with the, on the nose from Kevin. FC5 is um, a little parcel that edges uh, Abington and Cheltenham, and the motion on the in the paper is, is incorrect. Uh, the parcel number should be 31008500089307, known as 5 <coughs> Southeastern Road in Cheltenham. What was it? Um, 5? 5 Southeastern Road. Uh, the, the address listed is the address that's showing with the Cheltenham parcel, I mean, the Abington parcel, so we need to say we're accepting the Cheltenham side. Okay. Okay. So it's just a reverse. Okay. Okay. That would be great. So, motion to in include parcel 31008593007, known as 5 Southeastern Road, Sheltonham Township, to be 100% within the Township of Abington for real estate tax purposes under 53 PACS 8818. And I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Mr. Blumenthal. I just want to make a comment. Uh, Gunside Partners, or really Partners, came to me and they said that they'd rather put that into Abington because it causes a lot of issues. And our, I think our sewer and refuse is already being done at that parcel. So this is going to bring extra real estate taxes to us and possibly extra business taxes. Nothing to do with the fact that our taxes are a little cheaper than Cheltenham. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that was the main reason. <laughs> Okay, it has been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes the Finance Committee agenda for this evening. Thank you, Vice President Klein. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Tom Bowman, Director of the Pension Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item to review tonight. This is a Pension One, Resolution Number 16-028, Minimum Municipal Obligation for Pension Plans. This is a motion to adopt resolution number 16028, recognizing that the township's minimum municipal funding obligation for the calendar year 2017 with respect to municipal non uniformed employee, police, and non uniformed employee defined contribution pension plans is $672,666, $1,136,244, and $10,580, respectively, and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. And that is all for us. Okay. That concludes our formal agenda. Now, at this time, with our new speaking arrangement, it's time to call for public comment on non-agenda items. So, Mr. Alfred Scheib, you signed up. You want to come to the podium, state your name and address, and please observe the three-minute speaking rule. Okay. Thank you. My name is Alfred Scheib, 403 Stewart Avenue. Uh, a few things I have to say are questions. Uh, this is about the flood control study that was uh, done by the Army Corps of Engineers that included a suggestion for three detention basins in Abington Township. Um, have any of the commissioners read the study that was provided? Yeah. Yeah. A lot, like a year ago, but or almost a year ago, but oh. yeah, yes. Okay, December 16th was the meeting that I yes. attended where they presented it. Uh, has the engineer's office looked at it? Uh, sir, could you just, uh, sir, could you just make your comments and not do a Q&A of the staff? Well, I'm wondering what's really going on in the township with okay. respect to that. Now, I heard also that the township has decided to have another study done, a flood study. Is that correct? Well, continue your uh, questions, and we'll see if someone can uh, address them at a, a, another time, if not tonight. Okay. Mr. Farron told me that in an email message. Okay. Uh, when the second culverts were added under Bader Road and Jenkintown Road for underground flow paths, the water reached the detention basin behind Stewart Avenue more easily and in greater volume, increasing the flooding for the first two homes from Stewart Avenue. Now, 
This also affects a few houses beyond that downstream, which is mine. It doesn't uh, go into my basement as it does for the first two homes uh, on excessive flooding, but it does come up into the yards and it affects one outbuilding uh, behind one of those houses. And I think that is a consideration that the township should think about with respect to flooding in Abington Township. Detention basins upstream, as suggested by the Army Corps of Engineers study, would help with that problem. I've been looking at the uh, study information that's available at the Cheltenham Township website, and I got copies of some of them today. Does Abington Township monitor what's going on in Cheltenham with respect to that flooding? That's another question. I attended the Cheltenham Township Commissioner's meeting last night, and the Army Corps of Engineers uh, was there to review the current state of the study. They are still looking at at least six detention basins in Cheltenham Township. Uh, since Abington didn't seem to want to go along with what the Army Corps of Engineers had uh, found. Uh, and the Chetland chairman made a point last night of mentioning that the Abington Township knew about the study that was being done, and there was no surprise as far as the information that was presented here. Details, perhaps, but not in general. Next question, Japanese knotweed. I mentioned a month ago at the meeting, and I'm not sure how many commissioners attended. Mr. Klein was the only one I talked to. I left before it really got started. I've been in communication with Mr. Farron about knotweed. Japanese knotweed is an invasive species. There are native knotweeds in America. Knotweed is actually the primary commercial source of resveratrol, that thing that they found in not red wine some years ago. Uh, but I don't think it's the Japanese knotweed they're using. It's commercial knotweed. Anyway, knotweed is, Japanese knotweed is illegal in Australia, and it's controlled waste in the United Kingdom, for your information. That's in some of the uh, links that I sent to Tom Farron, hoping that they would be forwarded to the other commissioners so that people would know. Now, I know that one commissioner is full aware, fully aware of the problem of Japanese knotweed being an invasive. It's all over in the, our parks, and it really takes over. It grows very tall. It gets big leaves, about four or five inches across, and it tends to block out the light for other plants that could grow underneath. And it's really taken over in a lot of the parks. I've talked with Mr. Wendell, Wendell about uh, mitigating the uh, invasion, and he said he really doesn't have enough money to deal with it and or personnel uh, to pay to do that. And I've been cutting knotweed down in the J.B. Coates uh, bird sanctuary as, as well as further in that area and also I had permission from uh, Doug in general to cut knotweed and Mark Fallon in the Briarbush Nature Center to cut the knotweed down by the railroad in the corner of Briarbush. That okay. seems to be the only stand down there. Anyway, that's my words on knotweed. And I hope the commissioners can provide money and personnel, whatever is necessary, to help Parks Department deal with the knotweed. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Scheib. Uh, I, I might recommend that uh, your commissioner, Tom Farron, contact uh, Doug Wendell and maybe uh, see if that could be something put on the agenda uh, in the future for funding if that's, uh, if that's what it requires. Um, okay, are there any other comments from the public? Uh, sir, name and address and the three minute, please. <clears throat> Raymond Bell, 2076 Parkview Avenue. Uh, while it's three days early, uh, 15 years ago, where 2,996 people killed, 6,000 injured, 
of those killed was 343 firefighters, 72 law enforcement people uh, on September 11th, lest we forget. Thank you. Thank you very much for that comment, Mr. Bell. Any other comments from residents? Okay, if there are none, uh, that concludes everything except comments from the commissioners, and I'll start with Commissioner Zappone. Thank you. As a reminder to my residents, the Ardsley Family Day event will get underway October 1st at the Ardsley Community Center from noon to 5. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, a couple of uh, upcoming events, actually one of which uh, pertains directly to, uh, to Mr. Bell's comments. Um, uh, as may maybe many folks know, September is uh, Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. And uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night, uh, Friday, is the Abington-Cheltenham game, something that normally takes place on Thanksgiving, but uh, this year it's been moved to, I think permanently now, it's been moved to September. And uh, both teams uh, who will be facing off at 7 p.m. tomorrow at Schwartzman Stadium uh, are going to be, uh, they're, they're, they're going to be against, they're going to be fighting each other on the field, but they're united in one cause, which is to raise money for uh, various childhood cancer charities and also for both school districts' uh, THON programs. Um, so I uh, urge everybody to come out and uh, cheer on the ghosts. THON, as in Penn State, for those, for those who don't know, THON is Penn, is Penn State's annual uh, drive uh, throughout all Penn State campuses and a lot of public schools uh, participate as well. Uh, it, uh, it, it's a dance-a-thon that raises money for the uh, Hershey Four Diamonds uh, uh, Children uh, Pediatric Cancer Research Center uh, out, in, uh, out in Harrisburg, out in Hershey. Um, yes, thon. And uh, this Sunday, this pertains to what Mr. Bell was talking about. Could you spell that for me? T-H-O-N. It's short for Thank you. dance-a-thon. <laughs> God, I thought some people, I didn't even go to Penn State, and I know, but I thought some people Spiegelman, three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and pertaining, pertaining to the, the aptly time comment that Mr. Bell made, uh, this Sunday at the Public Safety Training Center on uh, Flory Lane, um, this Sunday at noon, uh, the, our Abington Township Fire Department, our, our all-volunteer fire department, is uh, hosting a 9-11 mem uh, remembrance ceremony. Uh, on the 15th anniversary of 9-11. That's again, that's at noon at Flory Lane. It was a beautiful ceremony last year and uh, definitely looking forward to attending this year. Um, and just to my friend, uh, Lieutenant Hawkwind, I'll say something. I hope he watches this. I will say uh, something he'll understand. Gut gemacht, mein Freund, und vielen Dank für alles. Because he speaks German. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner Spielberg. Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, just a quick announcement that the bike lanes have been installed on the fairway um, and a, uh, you know implementing a part of our master bike plan and uh, wanted to thank the uh, the commissioners who voted for to fund that uh, endeavor for this year so we can continue to build it out um, also thank you to manager Lefevre and uh, assistant manager Waymeyer for making that happened this year and of course the engineering department public works department for uh, th getting it going so uh, come on out and check it out while the weather's nice and take a ride down uh, the fairway looks great and uh, I think it will have a uh, nice traffic calming effect there too so uh, many benefits of uh, not only taking some cars off the road but uh, adding to the or uh, growing bike network so and uh, thank you Commissioner Klein too I know you were instrumental in all that so that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. Commissioner Rothman. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, briefly, two events on the uh, September on September 25th in the morning. Uh, Commissioner DiPosito and I will be uh, and Ben as well uh, at Alrathorpe Park for the McKinley uh, Civic Association annual picnic, beginning at 11:30 in the morning, and uh, hopefully it'll go for much of the day. Bring your baseball gloves, as Jimmy said in his newsletter. Uh, maybe we can go head to head in that one, Jim. Um, luck. <laughs> I, I hope we'll have a camera for that. Um, later that day, uh, one of the residents in Ward Three uh, runs a charity. Uh, it's known as Jesse's Day. Uh, One p.m. till 4 p.m. at the Independent Seaport Museum. Easiest way to get information uh, on that is to Google Jesse's Day. Uh, and there's a, a 
good good bit of information there. But basically, the uh, charity is designed to provide uh, funding for pediatric transplant recipients. Uh, one of my residents' daughter uh, was provided with a, the opportunity to live uh, almost nine years longer due to a uh, a heart transplant that she received when she was 14 uh, many years ago. So I invite the community to look up uh, that event. If you can't be there, you can certainly donate online. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Myers. Thank you. Uh, in the spirit of um, Lieutenant Hawkwind's retirement, the PAL Food Festival this year will be on Tuesday, October 18th. And our honoree is Chief Bill Kelly. And uh, we're having a unique theme this year because it is an, a presidential campaign year. We have made the theme Hail to the Chief. So we plan to have a lot of fun with this. The police officer, as we always do, will, that we will be honoring is Lieutenant Steve Hawkwin. And these two people, of course, especially the chief, have done more for Pell, the two of them, than many, many people put together. We know that this will be a huge, really great celebratory event, and of course everyone is invited, and we hope to see you all there. Thank you. Thank you, Peggy. Commissioner Markman. No comment. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Schreiber. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody about the upcoming Roslyn Car Show and Fall Fest, which is Saturday, September 24th, starting at 3 p.m. The rain date is the 25th. Yeah. So, but it's not going to rain. It's going to be beautiful. So we'll see everybody on the 24th. Thank you. Commissioner Bowman. Just, uh, I've known Steve Hockwin since 1988, and uh, he's a good man, and uh, we'll miss him, and happy retirement. Thank you, sir. Commissioner DiPosito. Thank you, President Luther. First off, I want to thank uh, Commissioner Farron for his absence tonight. I finally have some elbow room around here. <laughs> for a six-foot-four frame squeezed in the corner over here all the time. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time uh, uh, chastising, yelling at the road cars that either drive down my street or up Jenkintown. But today I want to take a different approach. I want to thank the vehicles and those who drove them through uh, Jenkintown Road and throughout Ward 4 this week. Um, it seemed as if you were really conscious of what was going on, which was back to school. Uh, we crossed approximately 100 kids from one side of a busy Jenkintown Road to another to either catch a bus or make it to McKinley, McKinley Elementary. So I think you're getting it. You're really driving like your kids live here. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Hecker. Uh, thank you, President Luger. Uh, just one event I'd like to call everyone's attention to, and this is being sponsored by a resident of mine by the name of Beth Kerr. She contacted me earlier this week to uh, inform me about the blood drive and bone marrow transplant donor match event that she's been hosting for the last several years. It's called Strong Like Sean, and I just want to read a little bit of what she relayed to me. So her son, Sean, was diagnosed with leukemia at the age of three. He had chemo almost daily for over three years, to, and today he's a happy, healthy 10-year-old. And because he had a blood cancer, he's banned from donating blood for the rest of his life, which she says is ironic in a sad way because blood donations literally saved his life. Without them, he couldn't start chemo, and without chemo, he wouldn't have survived. And so to pay back the kindness of strangers who donated the blood that saved him, she vowed to host a blood drive every year for the rest of her life, and this will be the fourth year. So this year the event will be held on Friday, September 23rd from 3.30 to 8.30 p.m. at the Supergiant in Willow Grove. And if you're interested in participating uh, and want to be a donor, you can reach out to Beth directly at 267-408-5002. And we will be uh, advertising this in our newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hecker. Commissioner Kalinowski. Yeah, I have two CAP events I'd like to uh, tell everybody in the public here tonight. Um, Friday, September 30th, we're going to have a drive-in movie theater night at the senior high school, and we're doing Goonies. So if everybody remembers Goonies and remembers being at a drive-in, it is a free event. Um, we're just going to be asking for donations that night. So come on down, get a carload, and we'll have refreshments and 
all those concession stands out there too. So that's September 30th. And then Sunday, October 2nd is our uh, bike run, our annual motorcycle run. It's 60 miles through Montgomery County and then back to the VFW for a luncheon. So if anybody's got a motorcycle or knows somebody that has a motorcycle or would like to get on the back of somebody with a motorcycle, come on over. And you can register both of them online through CAP. You can like us at Facebook. So interested, come on, check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Vice President Stephen Klein. No comment. Thank you, sir. And lastly, before we adjourn for the evening, um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Bell and also Commissioner Spiegelman for mentioning the 9-11 uh, Remembrance Service this coming Sunday. Um, and what time is that again for the – That's at noon. That's at noon. Okay. Starts at noon. Thank you. And uh, secondly, I'd like to announce that this coming – and, Chief, you can help me on this one um, – this coming Saturday, Unity Day will be sponsored by the Willow Grove NAACP at Crestmont Park from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, and I just wanted to give special thanks to uh, Officer um, Griffin, who's assisting with the uh, program this year, and also Van Struthers. I understand they're going to have a shredding event this Saturday at Crestmont Park, along with the Unity Day events of uh, some additional rides and other activities uh, to try to um, uh, create more of a, a bond in Abington Township. And along with that, the chief is going to be making a, um, a presentation, if you will, or a, um, a uh, dedication. So if, if you will, Chief, could you elaborate on what's going to happen at around 1130? Um, Mr. President, uh, the uh, NAACP and the Abington Township Police Department are going to be signing and entering into a formal agreement and uh, it is um, an agreement that uh, encourages citizens to come out and to, um, if they see any type of police misconduct, we know that people do not come to, like to come to the police to complain about the police, so we're encouraging them to go to the representatives of the NAACP who will act as a sort of an ombudsman and come forward with that if, uh, if there is something out there so we can follow up on it and then uh, find out if there's a problem. If so, deal with the problem. If not, be able to get back to the people and let them know exactly what happened and why and maybe uh, kill some of these rumors which are adding to the, the fear that uh, certainly is out there um, in our society right now about the interactions with the police. And um, it, it, there's a couple of other aspects of it where the um, NAACP and the police department are formally agreeing to work together uh, on this. And uh, somebody said that sounds like a pretty historic uh, achievement, but actually it's not as historic as it might sound because we actually did a similar one back in 1998 um, between the Willow Grove NAACP and the Abington Police Department. And um, as you know, we've had an outstanding relation, cooperative relationship um, in that time period since then. And we're doing this uh, as much symbolically as anything else uh, because we do many of these things already. But it's certainly to set the example that um, um, where, where it's really at in communities is working together for common good, not just fighting amongst each other or arguing with each other. So that's the purpose of this. And um, we will be there at 1130 is the time that um, we're going to be getting together the president of the NAACP. Um, my, uh, on behalf of the NAACP, myself on behalf of the police department, and um, President Luker on behalf of the township will be signing this official uh, document. Thank you, Chief. This is uh, very symbolic because a lot of municipalities are just starting to go down this path, and uh, Abington under uh, Chief Kelly and uh, Ms. Valerie Ward have been very poor, and others involved with the NAACP have been active in uh, uh, opening these lines of communications for over 20 years. So Abington has been at the, at the uh, forefront, if you will, of uh, trying to uh, uh, create the dialogue and keep the lines of communication open between the community and the police department. So with that, uh, if there's no further business, I'll end the motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you all for attending and have a good evening. Thank you.